God bless you and welcome to another episode of God at Work. This week we're doing something um, as a reminder. We've had a lot of people write in or comment or call or whatever asking how Pastor Esteban Montalvo is doing. And this is one year since he was told he wasn't going to live. Since he was 100% reliant on the, the respirator and all of the breathing machines and everything else. And the doctors had told him there was no hope. But I've got good news for you. He's going to be with us next week and tell you where he's at now. But in the meantime, because I know this was quite a long time ago that we did this program, and there's many of you have not seen it, we're going to do a recap of what happened and how we're, we've come to this point. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope it reminds you of the miracles that God has done. So we're going to start out because Pastor Stephen became a very dear friend for both Jerry and I. And um, we stayed in their house down in... Villa Hermosa in Mexico, and I first met Pastor Esteban at a pastor's conference in Hawaii that he came for from Mexico. So it's kind of exciting having this time to share his story. So we're going to start out with a song that is very special to him. It's a song that for until just recently was only in Spanish, Amigo del Alma. But we, by a miracle of God, a good friend of ours, Gabriel Garcia, was able to translate it for us and put it into English. So here we go with My Soul Friend. <laughs> soul friend forever, always true and sincere. You're my love and desire, my Lord and my God. You're the way we must follow, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father unless it's by you. My soul friend forever, always true and sincere. My greatest desire is to love you, my King. All my mind and my strength, all my soul and my being, I surrender my heart to you. And your love will live forevermore. My soul friend forever, always true and sincere, you're my love and desire. My Lord and my God You're the way we must follow The truth and the life No one comes to the Father Unless it's by you My soul friend forever Always true and sincere My greatest desire Is to love you my King With all my mind and my strength All my soul and my being Render my all to you And your love will live forevermore I wandered and drifted Was rejected and homeless I turned my back on you And went my own way pain and my sorrow, I eagerly sought you. You stretched out your hand to me and asked me to stay. My soul friend forever, ever true and sincere. My greatest desire is to follow you, Lord. To follow the pathway that will lead me to heaven, leaving this world behind. Your love will last forevermore Oh, my soul friend forever Always true and sincere You're my love and desire My Lord and my God You're the way we must follow The truth and the life No one comes to the Father Unless it's by you My soul friend forever Always true and sincere You're my greatest desire As to love you my king With all my mind and my strength All my soul and my being I surrender my heart to you 
My soul friend forever. Well, Stephen, I can honestly say, has been a dear friend. When I was sick, him and his family were praying for me regularly. They have a, a nightly prayer meeting online, and they were all praying for me very regularly the whole time I was in the hospital. And when I got out, they were praying for my, my daughter. They've been praying continually. Just like when Pastor Stephen was sick, we've been praying for him. We actually held a prayer meeting that many people still remember today. We have this prayer meeting with online for anybody that wanted to join in to be praying for Pastor Esteban. And there's a picture here. I just asked Jerry to put up for a second. Pastor Esteban Montalvo. There he is. So now you know what he looks like. He was a very vibrant speaker, actually. People used to laugh because he would make comments and jokes constantly when he was talking with you. And people never knew whether to take him seriously or whether he was actually joking around. But he's a dear friend. So Pastor Esteban. But he became very, very sick with COVID. They were really being careful. Their whole family was sort of got an inner little bubble, taking care of themselves and each other. And all of a sudden, COVID hit their home and 13 members of their family ended up sick with COVID. Many of them ended up in the hospital, but Pastor Steven was hit the worst. There's a picture of him here in the hospital and the doctors are saying that it says here, the doctors didn't give any hope. At one point they gave absolutely no hope for Pastor Steven. They said there was nothing that they could do. He was gone. And you can see in this next picture, they've actually intubated him. It was Father's Day when they intubated him and put the tube in because he wasn't breathing, he wasn't getting oxygen. And it ended up that he was 100% reliant on the machines to live. He wasn't alive other than the machines were keeping him alive. And it came to the point they finally, after they removed the tube, they, they had come to a point where they thought that he wasn't going to make it through the night. And they called his family and they told him they, of course, during COVID, they couldn't go in to visit. So the family, they held up a iPad so that the family could be there with him. You can see actually in the next picture, his wife Norma's down there in the corner. And that was how they could communicate. He could, he said last time that he could actually hear a lot of what was going on and realize what was being said. Although he couldn't talk, he couldn't respond. And so they were able to call in and pray for him and say their goodbyes. But God worked miraculously because the next morning when they were going to pull the plug, they realized they didn't need to. He was no longer 100% reliant on the machines. He was back in the land of the living. And within a short time, he was out of the hospital. They got him home. But he hadn't been in bed all that time, not been able to move, and he couldn't move. He couldn't stand. He couldn't walk. He couldn't lift his arms. He couldn't move his legs, nothing. You can see in the next picture, he is in bed, but he couldn't even sit up for them to feed him. He couldn't feed himself, and he couldn't lift his arm to feed himself. So people had to feed him. He couldn't sit up or anything. But look at the progress. You see in the next picture, there he is sitting up. He's still not feeding himself, but he's sitting up to take the food. And he had to have physiotherapy come in every single day. But he commented how he was in excruciating pain, just touching his skin, just touching him. And it sent these painful, like electric shocks through his body. It was so painful for him. But he was determined he was going to be back, moving doing everything he needs to do. And you're going to see how far back he's come. Next week, Pastor Stephen will be with us to show you just what's been happening. Because so many people, when they hear someone has COVID, and it's a serious case like Pastor Stephen's was, it's like they give up. Both my husband and my son ended up with COVID just a week ago. And my husband especially was pretty sick, and he's battling cancer at the same time. So he was pretty sick. 
but they both have come through it. They're both back to testing negative and doing well. But it's, it's not a fun thing when all of a sudden, you know, someone that's close to you, someone that you love, you find they've got COVID and a serious case of it, like Pastor Stephen. And during COVID, you know, when people couldn't even get into the hospital at that time, they couldn't go in to see him at all. So it made it very difficult. They could talk to him via the iPad, via the iPhone, you know, with the FaceTime and things like that, but they could not go in. They couldn't give him a hug. They couldn't tell him how much he meant to them by giving a strong hug. They couldn't do it. They weren't allowed to. All they could do was speak the words through the means communication means. Tell him how much they loved him. Tell him they, how much they were praying for him. And telling him how much they believed that God was doing a miracle. Well, you'll see in the next picture how great a miracle. There he is outside in the wheelchair with, with his therapist, pushing him around their garden. They have a beautiful garden out there with coffee beans and you name it. They've got it. Bananas and all sorts of plants and flowers. And I, I loved it out there. It was just so peaceful. But then look at the next picture. Here he is still in his garden. But forget the wheelchair. He's walking beside it. But they had the wheelchair there for when he needed to sit down. But he was so determined. And then pretty soon he got from walking in his garden to being out in the community. Look at this. There he is. And he was so determined walking down the street that he was going to be back living as normal very quickly. And he is. So you're going to see things. A lot of people have asked how Pastor Esteban was doing. And I thought it would be really good for him to be able to tell you himself. So I wanted to give you sort of a, a recap of what happened and how we got to this point and why so many of you have been asking, how is he now? I want this to be an encouragement for you to trust for your friends, for your family, for your loved ones, that when you hear that they've got COVID, that it doesn't mean that it's a death sentence. It doesn't mean that that's it. When they say, even when the doctors say that's it, like the doctors gave no hope for Pastor Stephen. He proved them wrong. And so can your loved ones. So can you prove them wrong. So stand strong. If you have someone that you're believing for, stand strong, believing. Because as Jerry's going to sing here, the closing song, great is thy faithfulness. His faithfulness is so strong. His faithfulness is continuous. And his faithfulness, just as it was for Pastor Stephen, is for your loved ones. Jerry, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Pardon 
for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for is thy faithfulness and it is so true i know i've seen it in my own life i've seen it in the lives of many people how faithful god is and please know he will be faithful for you and he will be faithful for your loved ones even if it doesn't seem it when you're watching the situation when you're looking at it even if the results aren't what you expect god's faithfulness is permanent. God's faithfulness is always there. And sometimes when we don't see the result that we want the way we want it, we might not understand why, but we know that he is faithful. And the reason sometimes we might not know, but he does. Like for me, when my daughter passed away a few months ago, it was terribly difficult for me. And I, I mean, I, I had questions going, well, why God? And then I realized he knows would be down the road for her. He knows what there was ahead. And he saved her from it. But he also saved her from all the pain that she was going through. She was living in horrendous pain. And he delivered her from that. So he is faithful. And we've got to believe that. No matter what's going on, we need to believe in his faithfulness. So, so please remember, he is faithful to you and your loved ones. Don't forget that. Let's pray. But as we do, I want to put a picture here of Pastor Esteban and his wife, Norma, a happy, vibrant couple serving the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Pastor Esteban and Norma and all that they are doing for you, Lord, that they know that calling that you have placed on their lives. And Father, they're not letting anything or anyone hinder that. So, Father, I pray right now that just as you have brought him through this past year, and we get to hear the stories of it next week, but, Lord, just as you have brought him through, that you will do that for all those who turn to you and seek you, Father. So, Lord, I ask that your perfect will will be accomplished in each one of our lives, just as your will was to bring Pastor Stephen through, because there's so much that you have for him. Lord, I continue to pray for, for Jerry and his back and the pain that he's going through. And Lord, th that you have so much ahead for him. So Lord, just as you did this for Pastor Stephen, I pray that Father, you also will continue that healing work that you started in Jerry's life, Lord. And Father, I ask that many will continue to pray in your precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, those of you that would like to know even more details of what Pastor Stephen went through, 
um, while he was in the hospital with the COVID and all that. We do have the recording from over a year ago, and I will put the link to that in the description part of the uh, link where you can look up all the details. And there you'll have the link. So you can go back and watch the whole program with Pastor Devin if you'd like to. But we wanted to give you the recap today so you're ready for what he tells the year update a year later. God bless you. And if you feel like sowing into this ministry, it's always greatly appreciated. So please do. Jerry will put the details up on the screen so you'll know exactly how to do it. God bless you and we'll see you next week.